After staging a coup more than a week ago, the military in Mali is losing more ground to Tuareg rebels in the north. And with pressure growing from neighboring countries, the military says it will hand back power to a civilian government. How can they continue to fight the rebellion in the north? And what does it all mean for the people of Mali? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Hazem Seeker. Well, after seizing several strategic towns, Tuareg rebels now control nearly all of northern Mali as they step up their fight for their own homeland. It's been just over a week since Mali's government was overthrown by a military coup. On Sunday, the coup leader, Amadou Sanogo, pledged to establish the country's 1992 constitution and its state institutions and to organize a transfer of power back to civilians. As of today, we are committed to restore the 1992 constitution and all the institutions of the republic. However, given the multidimensional crisis we face, we will need a transition period to preserve the national unity. We will start talks with all political entities to put into place a transitional body that will oversee free and transparent elections in which we won't take part. Well, let's take a closer look then at where things stand right now. Mali's Tuaregs, part of the nomadic community of the Sahara, live in the area of Azawad, which refers to the Tuareg-speaking zone that covers the country's north. Azawad consists of three regions, Timbuktu, Gao, and Kidal. The Tuareg make up roughly 7% of Mali's population. Tuareg's National Movement for the Liberation of Azawad, NMLA, is calling for the independence of the country's north. They have long complained of being marginalized by the government in the south. The post-colonial history of the Tuareg in Mali has been characterized by a series of rebellions which started in 1962. And now, following Mali's military coup, Tuareg rebels are taking advantage of the country's instability. In recent days, both Kidal and Gao were seized. And on Sunday, the Tuareg rebels took control of Timbuktu. Now, this had been the only remaining town in the Azawan region under the control of the army. Its capture by rebels deals a massive blow to the army and signals a loss of authority over Mali's north. We'll be discussing the latest developments in Mali with our guests in just a moment. But first, we're joined by Al Jazeera's Hashim Mahalbara. He's in the Malian capital, Bamako. Hashim, thanks for being with us. Uh, first of all, how do you gauge the mood right now in the country? Well, people now are more optimistic than before. They're quite, they were quite concerned about uh, the eventuality of the coup leader saying no to the uh, ultimatum issued by the ECOWAS, which would... Uh, put Mali under loads of strains, further isolation, more economic sanctions. You, you would just see more scenes of panic. But the message, which was really clear from the coup leaders, that they would like to, uh, that they're restoring the constitutional order from today and also the, rep the institutions of the republic, they will respect the choice of the international community and of the Malian people, give power back to uh, a transitory body, and then step aside. That's very good news for the people here. However, this is a problem they will have to grapple with in the future, which is almost one third of the country, which is now under the control of the uh, Tuaregs of Azawad. And is there a sense, Hashim, of, of uh, what people are thinking as far as where things go from here? Because this coup did have uh, a number of supporters uh, in Mali when it first began. Yeah, they managed somehow uh, here, for example, in the capital to rally some uh, some, some uh, public support behind them. People, of course, they were really frustrated with the era of the uh, president, Amaru Tumani Tori, the pervasive graft culture in the country, the poorly armed army, and, uh, and a state which was about to disintegrate, and also the uh, uh, defeats in the northern part of the country, and also the rebels of uh, uh, Azawad, which started to gain more ground also, you have also the Ansar al-Din, a radical group with some sense of affiliation with al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, AQIM. So people wanted these things to be fixed. However, they were optimistic about that coup for some reasons. But then when they saw that the international community is just going to put more pressure on them, they said, you know what, we have to have a better way to 
manage the, this whole crisis. This is exactly why today when they saw that declaration by Captain Sanogo, they said the bottom line, that's better than anything else. All right, Hashim, we'll let you get back to uh, covering events there for us in Mali. Hashim Mahabhara for us in the capital, Bamako. Many thanks for your time. Well, can the coup leaders fulfill their promise to hand the country back to civilians? And what would that mean for the rebellion in the north? Well, to help us answer these questions, we're joined by our guests in Leeds, Akli Shkar, a spokesperson for the Imugar Organization for Justice and Equality. In London, we have Alessandra Jufrida, an anthropologist at the School of Oriental and African Studies. And in Abidjan, on the phone, we have Kadri Desiree Wandrago, president of the Economic Community of West African States. Welcome, all three of you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Awadrago, if I could start with you. Do you welcome this latest move uh, by the coup leaders? Is it enough? Yes, uh, exactly. This is what ECOWAS uh, uh, was demanding, and uh, this is what has been uh, announced by the coup leader. So if this is so, we are ready to reconsider uh, the sanctions that uh, we intended to impose on, uh, on, on Mali, because this was uh, the demand of the authority or head of state or government, and if they abide by this demand, so we are ready to revise our position. When you say you're ready to, to reconsider these sanctions, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean uh, you'll be prepared to, to take another look at the deadline that you've imposed? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you see, the deadline was uh, Monday, 2nd of April. Uh, if by tomorrow they uh, obey the ECOWAS decision, I do not see any reason why we should uh, impose sanctions on them. But uh, in the contrary, we will be in a position to apply these sanctions. All right, stay with us, Mr. Uh, Drago, because I want to go to our uh, two other guests now and ask, ask them about the implications uh, of all this. Uh, first of all, Akli Shka in Leeds. It does seem, doesn't it, as though the rebels have really taken advantage uh, of the coup situation uh, in Mali, in the, in the south, uh, to take more territory in the north. Where do you think, where do you want this to end? Uh, thank you for having me here. And uh, before just asking your question, I just would like to say to say a few words in my in the tongue language. Then in Merti Muhar and Kata Jetafus Dafus, a very Dishidren Harwa, Tarab Merturan Magzata Kata Jimufus Dafus, which means uh, that I've just congratulated the Tuareg and the uh, Azawite people and the whole Tuareg in the continent for having uh, the new state that they can uh, their own. Uh, I think, yes, the, the coup actually is a fortune or there's luck that comes uh, for the Tuareg uh, rebellion in the north. But uh, uh, from the beginning, the Tuareg actually, uh, as you know, the, this revolution is, is not something new. It has started in 1963 and since then Tuareg actually uh, trying to, 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 uh, to end the marginalization and uh, all sorts of racism, and uh, they faced a lot of a crisis, a nature crisis, natural crisis, and also uh, ethnic uh, cleansing, and they faced all sorts, and uh, thousands and thousands of Tuaregs since then are refugees between Algeria and uh, Libya, and they always facing racism in these countries. But now we ha we can call we can say that the this is actually a historical moment for the whole Tuareg in the continent of Africa. They can say yes, we made it at last after 55 years of of uh, of uh, marginalization, of suffering, and uh, of refugees and statelessness. Now the Tuareg actually have their own state, and in a few hours we we, we are expecting to the, the declaration of the first. Uh, a state of the Tuareg in the African continent. Yes, the coup actually, which comes in a in a very uh, uh, unclear condition. Is I, I, uh, from the beginning I was saying that this is not a coup. It's just you know a frustration that's been building up in the uh, in the Bamako and some areas because the families and the uh, Malian uh, people don't want to send their children. Uh, to fight against uh, the people who are fighting for their for their rights for their country and just dying in a vast uh, desert without anything actually and they're facing and killing people innocent people 
Th this is that's why actually uh, this has started in, in Bamako. But when you it's not a coup, and this is right. the evidence now. But when you when you when you talk about uh, declaring independence here, that depends a great deal, doesn't it, on uh, others recognizing that independence. And there are people in the government uh, in in Bamako and and people in, in in the ECOWAS countries who will certainly have something to say about that. Yes, when it comes actually on the who recognize and who's not, uh, it's not actually uh, down to Bamako decide this, uh, the, 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 the situation of the Tuareg now. Well, who it is can't it down be to because, because now the whole I mean, it isn't, it isn't just down to your people, it, with, with all due respect. It is, it is actually. I am not agree with you. It's the down to the people, and they have made it now, and it's in a few hours they are going to pronounce their state for the first time in the history. Now all the international community has to understand that the Tuareg are not retreating. Do you think they will the understand that? That's, now, that's more the question I'm asking. Well, they have to actually. They have to understand this because this is the end of the Mali re presence in the north of country. All the territorial of under the Tuareg now. It's the, the now is the community, international community. If the, if actually want to put an end of this conflict, which starts uh, 55 years now or 52 years now, this is the end. We, we are, as we as it's happened in Libya and happened in Egypt, in Tunisia. It is this is exactly what happened in the north of Mali. This is right. reality now. The, the international community has to realize this and put an end of this. Let's get the view then from, let's get the view from, from, from London, Alessandra Jafrida. What is your view of what is, uh, has been unfolding in Mali over the last few days? Well, uh, what I've been noticing is uh, that uh, it's history repeating itself. Uh, during the 1990s uh, uh, coup and rebellion, um, Perhaps uh, people who are familiar with history will remember that uh, uh, Amadou Toumani Toure, the uh, president of Mali, uh, had uh, constituted the uh, uh, Comité de Transition du Salut du Peuple, which was the interim government that uh, passed certain uh, reforms that, uh, such as, for example, the uh, uh, decentralization of uh, the, the, the different regions uh, uh, in uh, the country, including the constitution of the region of Kidal. Now, uh, I'm not sure whether uh, the uh, plan that ECOVAS is uh, uh, suggesting will include uh, renegotiating the institutional asset and administration of the north of the country, but certainly there is a slight chance that uh, the Azawad could uh, claim its right to secession, unilateral secession, uh, uh, from uh, the state of Mali. Uh, and this will therefore put the ball back in uh, the state of Mali uh, court. And it will be up to the state of Mali to decide how to solve the, 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 uh, the question. I'm also wondering, uh, you know, how uh, countries like Algeria, which have historically been the mediators of uh, Tuareg rebellions, will respond to uh, the ECOWAS suggestion. And perhaps this is something uh, uh, Mr. Wadrago uh, can uh, tell us. And, uh, uh, and also Mauritania, which is another uh, uh, country at the border with Mali. Um, I'm not sure whether Mauritania and uh, Algeria are in ECOWAS. I do not think so. Yet they are both countries that uh, um, share their borders uh, with, uh, with the north of Mali. And uh, overall, I think that if uh, the uh, uh, MNLA, uh, which is the main rebel movement, the secular rebel movement that has been trying to uh, put forward uh, some sort of uh, communication with the public, unlike uh, Ansar Din and uh, uh, Akmi, who, for some, which for some reason has been uh, conflated with the, um, with the, with the rebels. Um, I just uh, uh, wonder what, um, what will be in the end. The, um, the, the twist we'll see in the strategy that the MNLA will find in claiming the yep. uh, sovereignty over its right. uh, region and well, there's a number, country. There's a number of issues that you bring up there, which hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, a little bit later. But I want to get the view from ECOWAS now as we talk uh, a little bit more about ECOWAS as well. And uh, more than a week after taking power 
The coup leaders are facing increasing pressure from both inside and outside the country. The economic community of West African states, better known as ECOWAS, is considered the region's top decision-making body. Now, armies from ECOWAS nations have never intervened to resolve a conflict in a member state, but the group has suspended Mali's membership and kept its peacekeeping forces on standby to intervene. ECOWAS has rejected an appeal for military aid against the Tuareg rebellion made by Mali's coup leader. It said it will only help if the constitution is restored. Now, ECOWAS has also called on the soldiers to hand power to a civilian government or face diplomatic and financial sanctions. Uh, we understand that this is on hold right now. And this would, if those sanctions were to happen, this would include neighboring countries closing their borders to the landlocked nation and freezing Mali's account at the regional central bank based in Senegal. Mali is one of eight West African countries that uses a common currency, the CFA franc. So if I could turn back to you, uh, Cadre Desiree uh, Awadrago. Um, when you say you are, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the rebels uh, right now. When you say, uh, as ECOWAS has said in the past, that you would be prepared to offer negotiations uh, with the rebels, what does that entail exactly? Yes, uh, ECOWAS had uh, earlier on offered negotiation to the rebellion, even before the coup. Uh, but the principle of ECOWAS is zero tolerance to unconstitutional power. Uh, this applies to uh, Janta in Bamako, and this applies also to the rebellion in the north. Now, our other guest there, you heard from Leeds, Akli Shkia, said that uh, is basically declaring uh, uh, independence uh, uh, for his people uh, in, in the north of the country, uh, as, as uh, uh, many of his people uh, have done. Would you be, would ECOWAS be prepared to recognize uh, the independence uh, of the north of Mali? Absolutely no. As far as we are concerned, Mali is a full member of ECOWAS, and uh, we have said that uh, zero tolerance to unconstitutional power. The rebellion, if they want to claim independence, uh, who assure them that all the population in the north share their views? Have they carried out a referendum to know whether the population in the north wants to be independent from Mali? We cannot accept this kind of situation. We offer peaceful negotiations to them. But if they not accept this peaceful negotiation, then we will use uh, all other means. This is our principles, and uh, we will keep by these principles. All right, let's put that back then to uh, Akli Shka. You've, uh, you've heard the words there from uh, the president uh, of ECOWAS, who is not uh, uh, at this point recognizing the independence of the North. What do you say to that? I uh, just will say that the, it's not down to the ECOWAS, actually, to decide the, 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 the demands of Azawad people. It's been 50 years now for struggle and fighting for independence and to get their right, rights. But you, with, it's with now, respect, this you, is you've, said that, you've said that already, that it's not down to them, it's not down to anybody else. But what I'm asking you is what, what the next move would be uh, for the rebels in the, in, in the north? I think now, uh, the, 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 as I said earlier, I think the, the uh, MNLA made it very clear that they, they are ready actually for negotiations and s uh, keep sending letters and invitations for the Mali to Ma uh, Malian president to Manitouri, but no one actually recognized it and asked the international community for uh, interfering and de negotiations and, uh, and uh, getting their rights, but no one actually responded for them. And now they are now in a strong position now. Now it's not actually down to anyone else, okay, to, to decide if they are accepting independence of Azawad people or not. It's now, it's, it's, it's for the right. uh, interest of international... Alessandra Jufrida, you um, is there a case here? Can the rebels make a legitimate case here for independence? Well, I was uh, exchanging some views yesterday with uh, 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 an expert in international law, and I think, yes, there, there, there may be some ground uh, if the MNLA can uh, find its way through uh, some particular uh, articles that are there to support their case and uh, will provide evidence uh, to defend their case. Uh, but uh, of course, this uh, uh, this requires the political will uh, of the international community and the MNLA to engage in such process. And as far as the negotiations are concerned, 
I do wonder what uh, ECOWAS uh, will uh, suggest, because in the past, uh, during the 1990s rebellion, the negotiations uh, uh, involved the decentralization of the north, the creation of the region of uh, Kidal, and the integration of uh, Tuareg rebels into the Malian army and in the civil service, uh, plus a certain amount of aid which was destined to the north of the country. Will ECOWAS uh, come up with a similar uh, plan? Uh, it hasn't uh, worked in the past, therefore what will they suggest uh, as a ground of negotiation? Yeah, let's talk a this little bit more about I that. Think All right, let's, let's, yes. let's put some of that then to uh, uh, Kadri Desiree uh, Wadraga. You heard uh, the comments there from our guest uh, in London. What's your view? Yes, uh, I have heard, but uh, I still keep speaking that uh, as far as we equate as uh, are concerned, uh, we have offered negotiation, we have nominated a mediator, and we are ready to consider uh, whatever proposals we receive from uh, all sides. But does that does that include uh, considering? Sorry, sorry to interrupt, Mr. Uh, Wadraga. Does that does that include considering uh, some sort of partial autonomy uh, for the north of Mali? Yes, I think that this was uh, what was negotiated uh, in the past, and we want to know exactly what are their claims in order to see whether we can accommodate them or not. This is why we are proposing uh, negotiations, and we are ready to, 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 to engage and to facilitate these negotiations so that we can have a peaceful solution. This is the priority of ECOWAS. If this situation uh, continues, uh, this, the instability that we're seeing in, in Mali currently, if, if this continues, would your group be prepared to send in troops if that goes on? Is that, is that an option that is still on the table? This is an option that is on the table. It is not the first option, but ex, uh, it, can, it has not to be excluded. Uh, it can be uh, certainly envisaged, and this is the instruction we got from our head of state to uh, get our standby force uh, in, in, in readiness. All right, let's turn back to uh, Aklishka in Leeds. Just tell us a little bit more about, uh, you talked earlier about some of the grievances uh, of your people uh, there, and uh, there is some debate about just how united uh, your group is. There, among, among the Tuareg, there are those who want some form of uh, Sharia law, for example, and there are those who want independence. I mean, just talk a little bit more about, about those divisions. Yes, uh, I think there is uh, divisions which are actually in the uh, between uh, between the uh, the Tuareg. It's, it's you can just apply it to whatever in the in the uh, in, in the uh, African states. We do have this. Uh, I mean, we, we, when we are talking about Ansar Din, they are okay. They they are uh, the leader actually. We uh, as if, as anyone knows, he's a bit radical actually. But that not, does not mean he's actually not. Uh, not with MNLA, he is a, a, a wing actually of MNLA. But there is no, and they 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 are all share actually one one target, which is as a wider state. That's all what we share. We uh, the Tuareg actually have been, as everyone knows, who even know a little bit about the north of uh, of uh, of Mali since 1963. They are facing, uh, you know, uh, genocides and killings and right. uh, refugees everywhere, and they are facing this. No one actually and. And um, I'll just try to say to the, uh, the uh, who's speaking, the ECOWAS, the speaker who's speaking from uh, yeah, Abidjan. Yeah, just briefly, if you can, And please. I will tell him, as, uh, as I'm, I will try to tell him that, if you are going to send your troops, actually you are going to, to commit a, a very, very big mistake. Because this will lead and drive the country in a, in a civil war, which will not end. And I, I, I wa we are warning as an international organization right, I want to I want to sorry to interrupt there. I just want to give the final word there to uh, more and Mr. More Rodrigo in Abidjan. Are you, are you confident that this will end uh, peacefully? I mean, are you, are you happy with what you've, uh, what you've heard so far from, from uh, the government in Bamako? And are you confident that this will end peacefully at some point? Yes, I, I, I believe that this can be ended uh, peacefully. Uh, the first step is uh, indeed very positive. We have uh, heard that uh, the government in, uh, in, in Bamako is uh, prepared to accept ECOWAS decisions. And right. if this is so, we restore we constitutional are... normality. And then, now we can address the issue of the, of the North. All right, that's going to have to be the last word. We're going to have to leave it there. I want to thank uh, all three of our uh, guests for taking part in the discussion.
In Leeds, Aklish Kar. In London, Alessandra Jufrida. And in Abidjan on the phone, Kadre Desiree Wadraga. Thanks for joining us. And thanks you for watching here on this edition of Inside Story. Remember, if you want to send us your feedback, just email your thoughts to us at InsideStory at AlJazeera.net. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.